Hey everybody, welcome to Fritzcraft. Uh, apparently we've finally gotten enough views to where YouTube says that our channel needs a name. So that's what we're going to use for now. Today we're going to work on using the texture paste that we made in the last video. This is what it's currently looking like. Oops, dropped it. Good thing is it's very sturdy. Kind of hard to see there. There we go. It makes a wonderful looking earthy product and it makes an even better looking snow. Today we're going to work on taking that to the next level. And what we're going to do is we're going to get some cork involved, maybe even a little resin. Um, we're, we're going to make a small dynamic base. This is just an old Warhammer base that I've had laying around that I use for pinning stuff to when I'm painting. Uh, so sit tight and let's do this together. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take our base and put it on our cork. And then just hold it down with our finger. Take a decent ink pen. Hopefully this is a decent ink pen. And we're going to draw a ring around the top of the base. And you want to make sure you use the top, because if you use the bottom, it'll be too big. Okay. So, we've got a ring. Now, you can use a knife to cut this. I'm going to see what happens if I try a pair of scissors, because I've never tried cutting cork with scissors before. Okay. It's most definitely easier to do it with a knife. Also, anytime you're using a razor, make, make sure it's sharp. Switch out those X-Acto blades every once in a while. If you don't, you're going to be more likely to cut yourself. Um, cutting yourself that that's a big thing in this hobby it, it happens a lot and I'm a big fan of this super thin insta-cure super glue if, if you cut yourself fairly badly as quick as you can throw some super glue on it uh, it will stop the bleeding it does not sting like rubbing alcohol or, you know, anything that burns. Now, super glue reacts to moisture, um, especially moisture in the air. All right. So when you put the super glue on a cut, your blood will actually make the super glue harden and create almost an instant bandage. Uh, you will not get an infection from this. Um, it will get you down the road to do what you need to do. Uh, coming from a person who's been cut severely on many occasions. Uh, it works very well. Uh, if you go to the hospital, the doctor will be surprised that you were smart enough to do that. Okay, so we've got this. And I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, all right, that gives us a deep base to really jank around with a little bit. Let's, um, hmm, let's have some fun. Let's carve it out a little bit. We'll go right across here. Don't try to make the hole perfect. Now, after you've cut your clean hole, take a thumbnail and just pick at it from the top going down. This will make the cork break at an angle. It gives a more, mm, I don't want to say natural, but it does give a little bit more of a natural transition. 
it's it's not as clean and yeah looks a little rough and that's what we want um, you know what, let's just pinch off a section here there we go okay round one fight next we are going to glue this piece of cork to this base Be afraid to use super glue. Okay. I'm liking it right about there. We do have some uh, zip kicker. We've actually got three different kinds of zip kicker here. Another thing, if you're ever running low on zip kicker, take you a cheap little dollar store squirt bottle and just put some rubbing alcohol in it. To be perfectly honest with you, when I run out of Zip Kicker, I'm not gonna buy it anymore. I'm just gonna use the rubbing alcohol because I absolutely hate the way Zip Kicker smells. All right, now using our scrap pieces here, I'm gonna line it up with this hole that I've made. We'll flip it over, take our pen, and we're gonna trace again <laughs> there we go ta-da all right we're gonna cut that out if you stay a little bit outside of your line don't worry it, this this does not need to be perfect as a matter of fact, if it looks perfect, you've done something wrong. Because um, it won't look right. Okay, so there's our other wobbly chunk of cork on there. We are going to shape this when it's all said and done with. Put a little drop of super glue back here. Drop there. A little drop here. If I can get to come out, there we go. I need to restock on that. Oh, yeah. We should probably put us a couple drops on the front, too. Just for safety. There we go. That is never coming apart. Alright. Now we're going to back up a little bit. Let's rotate it some. And we're going to do this process again. Flip it over, take your pen, trace the line, there we go, and then we're going to cut that up. Sounds like my son is having a ball in the background. My youngest is special needs. So on occasion, y'all might hear him in the background of the videos. All right, we're gonna stack that up. You know, this one we're gonna off center it a little bit. See how it's hanging off side there? No big deal. This is your world. Pull a Bob Ross, make it happen. I'm gonna back it up and staircase it just a little bit. dot, another little dot, let's put one here, and uh, let's let's do it up front because, you know, that's the way Mr. Rogers did it, right? Let's, um, hmm, let's go one more step. You know, this one. We're just going to snap it. There we go. We'll break it off all the way around. Because we'll trim this up when we get done. There we go. God, that looks perfect for what it is. Uh, we're 
going to step it back again just a little bit and take our glue and again just just a few dots because this cork really soaks it up and makes it harden really quick another dot okay all right we got that now what are we missing yeah, I think a real rock would be nice. I don't I don't really use real rocks. But I've got one sitting here and it's painted and I'm getting a little inspiration from it. So we got a rock here. Um let's get a general core concept with your pin on the bottom of what your rock is shaped like. You could also use bark to make your rock. It's it's not that important. I'm using it because it was sitting there and caught my attention. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to just lean this in. Saw it a little bit. Go. Like I said, if it if it's looking ugly, you got to get through that ugly stage to get to the pretty stage. That's how this works. I think I want it to lean back a little more. So we're going to carve out the back side. Actually, Let's just clean up the back side while we're here. We'll take our knife, lay it down, and just saw it to meet up with the base. Get most of the way through, just fold it over, cut it. some of the places where you put that super glue, it's going to be a little bit tougher. Okay. Let's put this piece back on because it popped off. If we can remember which way it went or if it was even that piece. You know what? I like that piece right there. We're going to leave it loose and use it to uh, sure up this rock. Yeah, that looks good. Take that, Bob Ross, with your happy little tree. I got a happy rock. All right. Dot of glue. Dot of glue. Dot of glue. Oh, I pulled it too soon. Right there. Another dot across the front. Ta da! We can spray some zip on it. I hate the way this stuff smells. Okay. Alright. At this point, we're at the ugly phase, but it is starting to look like something. Um, what we want to do is just take our nail. We want to scratch this up, chip it down like we did at that bottom, start at the top, flick it forward, what we're doing by doing this is creating a gradient. And yes, those places where we put the super glue is going to be harder to chip at. You could use a tool for this, um, 
but honestly by the time you find the tool you're looking for I mean a screwdriver would work I've, I think I've even used a steak knife for this before it, it, it looks good I want to scratch up this cork rim that we made earlier there we go a little bit on this side We just want to lightly graze it. We want to. We're going for texture here. Okay, it's starting to look like a thing. Things are good. A lot of people like things. I like things. Sometimes things are the best people. Okay. So from this point. We're going to put this to the side and get our paint. Alright, we got a few of our little supplies in order here. Still have a very large amount of this random craft rich art paint from the dollar store. So we are going to use it. Put us a little dot of black. Boy, this stuff's thick. Okay, let's get our white. Do a small dot of white. Whoops, that might have almost been too much. Come on, it's so thick. All right, let's um, mix it up and see if we like it. I'm seeing is it definitely needs to be thinned down. So one or two drops of water should be enough. Oh yeah. That's interesting. The uh, white paint does not seem to like water very much, but it is a water-based paint. Okay. That's a, that's a very dark gray. Let's, let's go a few shades lighter. I honestly thought it would take more, well, less white paint than that. <laughs> and I'm the king of overdoing it, so I probably just did it. <laughs> I just probably added way too much white. But we'll find out together, right? This is already way more paint than I'm possibly going to use. Let's add a little more water. Another two drops. Okay, now we're getting down to the color I want. Had somebody ask me today why I'm not using a wet palette in my videos. Well, truth is, I have a wet palette and I do regularly use it. We just have not come into a situation that requires me using it yet. We've used a lot of thin paints, contrast, speed paint, metallic colors. Those are all things that you do not want to put on your your wet palette. Contrast paint destroys the sponge in your wet palette. Um, speed paint is bad for a wet palette. The um, metallics literally eat through the paper liner and just eat up your sponge over time. All right, so we got us a little saturated gray here. We're going to wipe some of it off, and then we're going to see what we got here. Use our palette. Okay, I'm digging that. We're good right here. Small circles. It's, it's funny to take a rock and paint a rock to look like a rock. I know it, uh, it always feels silly to me. And in this situation, we're only going to paint the front portion of the rock. Okay, there's my first coat. Um, 
Let's see here. I'm going to need more white paint. It might be easier just to take some of that gray and move it into one of these other trays. So, we'll just do that. Because we're really not going to use much paint. But it's taking a lot of this paint to color change. Okay. A little more of the white craft paint. And this is actually a genuinely bright white. Okay. Let's mix this up. And of course we need water. Put about two drops. Mix, stir, mix, stir, mix, mix, mix. Uh, it's pretty close to the color I want. If I want it a little darker, I just grab some paint from this side, dip the end of my brush in there, we're good to go. And I feel like we could go a little darker. So we'll scoop up a little paint from that side and just add it over here. Happy little bush. I wonder if we, we might should put some flocking on this. That might look interesting. Alrighty. That's about the color I want. There we go. Get our dry brush. And then wipe it off. There we go. Beat the bulk of it off right here. See what we got. Mm, getting there. We're just going to do our small little circles here. side. Tap for a little extra paint. Okay. Now time to move on to some more white. Might as well do what we did last time. We'll just peel that little paint out of there. We'll grab our paint from this side and bring it to this side. Now, if you really want to sell a fake rock, add a little bit of metallic flake to your paints. Um, when you look at a rock, it's, it's not just gray. There's little splats of silver and gold and everything else in there. Add some more white. I'm going to add a lot of white this time. Cause that, alright, couple drops of water, that was a little too much water, but it'll be okay. Alright, just mix that up here. Okie dokie. dry brush. Check our palette. Uh, way too much paint. We'll see how it looks. Okay. Okay. Go back to the palette and dab it a little bit. We are getting there. Well, technically we don't even have to do this backside. I just want to do the front. Okay. We can just 
beat brush the bottom here. Nobody's ever going to see that. white some really thick paint just small little circles and it's gonna start looking like a thing women really do make the best painters I mean they practice putting on makeup from the time they're little girls us men we have to learn to do this little circle your motion over time such a shame okay and there is our rock and that is the end of the painting portion of this Move our dry brush palette. I purchased a few cheap paint brushes from the Dollar Tree. Uh, here they are. Well, damn. These are total garbage brushes. You should never try to paint with them. But for what we're doing, it's probably going to work pretty good. So we're just going to get us a little glob of this um, amazing looking stuff here. And just put this little glob on there, smear it around a little bit. Probably should be wearing gloves for this. Okay. Take a brush and push it around. You know what? We before we get our hands destroyed. Never hurts to put on a glove. Okay, now we got our glove on, we can really go ham. We'll just take this and smear it all around. Because, why not? I'm a big kid. I like playing in the mud. We just want to coat all this cork in it. It's going to look great. Trust me. Okay. Get our little brush. Just gonna keep smearing it around till we get it looking a way we want. Because you can shape the earth with this. Alright, let's take a look at it. Put a little there. And you, if you're wearing a glove, you can literally treat this like modeling clay. You can just Scoop it up on your finger and shabammy. Shaboopy. We do a little shaboopy over here. Y y you can shaboopy all over this thing. Um, if you get it all over the base, don't worry about it. You can wipe it off with water later. Um, <coughs> it's definitely a good idea to seal these when you're done. Um, never hurts to throw a little matte varnish on there. Okay, there's that. We are uh, going to wipe off our surface a little bit and peel off our glove. Okay, 
so we cleaned up our area just a little bit. Uh, this is still wet. It, it takes a little while to dry. It's nothing crazy. You can still kind of shape it and everything. Um, but for the sake of video, we're going to speed through this. So over here, I have a spoonful of the snow paste that we made that I have let sit up and get a little hardened intentionally. And then I have the stuff from the cup, which is definitely a lot softer. Normally what I would do is put this in a Ziploc bag and then squeeze it out like a like pastry cake icing or something. As a matter of fact, we can just do that. I think I've got a Ziploc bag here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. We'll just show how to do this. Take our spoon. Get us a scoop. Carry it down to the corner of our bag. Make sure it stays in the bag. Close our lid. And just kind of work it into that corner the best you can. Give it a little twist. That'll keep it from back flowing on you. Take a pair of scissors and just cut the corner of the bag. Snip. Okay. We are now fully prepared to set our snow. Let's see here. And again, this is probably something I should be using gloves with. In this situation, the snow is going to hold two purposes. It's also going to hold our rock in place. We could throw some super glue in there, but that's fine. Alright, rock. How do we want a rock? Our rock can go wherever our rock wants to be. He's older than all of us. Um, right there. That's nice. That's a nice boulder. Okay. And we're just going to follow this ridge here a little bit. Come back up and around. Like I said, the majority of this rock's never going to get seen. Okay. Set that down. Get our spoon. Spoon! And we're just going to drag this. Lightly tap it. If you need it to be softer, you can dip your tool in water. Um, won't hurt anything. And if you thin this down a little bit more, it'll settle on its own. I'm just going to drag it back. I think I might already put a little super glue under there. Just because the rock is so heavy. And there on the side. So let's dip it in some water. There we go. Alright, now when you get up here to the front edge, you just want to lightly pat and push down. You you want that snow to look like it's rolling. Like it's really soft and it's just waiting on the edge of that stone, just barely hanging on. For those of you that live up north, you know what this looks like every time you walk <laughs> near a roof in the wintertime. Okay, 
So we got a few places here where our, our snow is going to just hang out. Let's uh, let our spoon. Going to slick it down just a little bit. Maybe even pull some of it off. Why not? It's our world. We can do whatever the heck we want. Get a little dirt mixed in it. Just drag it out. And just pull from the back to the front. A little piece of cork got broke there. No big deal. Never going to see that again. You get this stuff on your fingers. That's no big deal either. It's water-based paint. Wipes right off. Okay. Sometimes fingers just your best tool. All right. Let's take a look at this and see if we like it. I'll come down a little bit. There we go. All right. I'm digging that. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, we are going to put a couple spots of super glue on the rock. When you spray this stuff, make sure not to get it directly on your snow because Zip Kicker will turn anything white yellow. Okay. Alrighty. Now we've got our spoon that has a little bit of clumpy snow. We're going to come back to that later. Another thing I'd like to do is here lately I've really been enjoying this army painter snow and I'm not going to just douse it on there. We literally just take a little pinch of it, sprinkle it around just the world's smallest amount. Kind of like you're using a salt shaker. Um, It'll sink into this concoction and make it that much better. Okay, next step. We're going to do a little paint. In this situation, I'm going to use this uh, Phantasmal Blue. It's a nice little aqua color. little trays here. Then I have a clean one. Hmm. Go figure. Not that big a deal. We'll just put a little paint on the side here. Just a little dot. Just a little dot. Water dropper. Just a little dot. End of a paintbrush, just a little dot. There we go. Okay. Now, let's see. Old jump brush would be nice. Get our old bushy brush. That's what we're going to call this bushy brush. We're just going to lightly tap the bristles into the paint. As a matter of fact, if you wanted, you could even go back to your dry brush. We're just going to lightly tap it on there. Now, this bottom, you might actually have to use the paint directly out of the dropper. This isn't going to be a big deal. Just reach in there, put you a drop of paint. Whoops, it squirted. Like I said, your world, it's okay. And we're going to fill this in just a little bit. It's starting to look like a thing, isn't it? 
you know who says we can't we're gonna go up over this snow a little bit here alrighty put that back in our wash pot next we need a piece of plastic just so happens we have a piece of plastic I'll take a pair of scissors cut a strip out of this plastic I need better scissors don't pick on me <laughs> if you got time to pick on me you got time to hit that like button and if you want to troll me I'm cool with that too just make sure you subscribe so you can troll me in my next content as well <laughs> alrighty now what we're gonna do with this is kind of interesting actually because I don't think I've ever seen anybody else particularly do this let's make this uh, a little skinnier okay this is just a got it from one end pull 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 okay all right so we're gonna sit here and stretch this plastic and it's not gonna like it but we're the boss here and we we need this plastic all right so we take our super glue we're gonna use the plastic spoon for this just put us a dot of super glue on the spoon then we're gonna lightly dip the end of our plastic into that super glue and then we're going to attach it to our rock right there whoops might have to hold it for a second all this paint and everything is still wet okay we're going to fold that down and we're going to cut the plastic off. I think right about there should do it. Oh, didn't cut. Yes, my scissors are trash. Alright. So we push that plastic down. And don't worry if it sticks out like it's doing right now. We are going to take care of that right now. Uh, one thing I do want to do though so I want to I want to add a little bit more of that green paint to the top there. It feels like it's missing. It's kind of a blue green. It is a pretty pretty color. I like this color. Bro, oh. this thing needs like a major hardcore shake. there just drag it across the plastic a little bit front of the plastic back of the plastic doesn't matter you pick Ooh, there we go now I did just do a thing I just tore my plastic Let's get it back on there. Right there. Get an old junk brush. We'll put some super glue on it. Is there still. Yeah, boy. Take our little bit right there. None of this is going to matter here in a minute. Okay. All right. So that plastic 
is just there to be a guide. That's all it is. Alright. Oh. Stretch for a second. Be right back. Okay, so at this point, we got something that looks like a thing. It's still in the ugly phase. This is going to fix that. Got us a couple UV flashlights. We're going to resin it up. Now, I was thinking about using some pour resin in the bottom, but I don't think it would react too well with the water because it takes too long to cure. But we'll get some good effects with this. We're going to start at the top. Work our way across. And then stop right at the edge. Come from the back. Work around the edge. And then stop again. Then we're going to hit it with our UV light. Just for a second. Alright. Then we need a stick. This is a stick. It will work. We're going to touch our little bead of resin. Cut our light on. And then slowly pull down. Okay. We get it to a certain point. Curl a little bit. Cut it with a razor knife. Oh, it still wants to go, actually. There we go. Hmm. That was interesting. I've actually never had that happen before. Let's uh, try again. You do have to get pretty close with these flashlights. And that is a really hard place to reach. Come up here. We're having some technical difficulties. Let's just wipe that off and get our base set started. Alright, so more resin. Righty. I actually got two lights. Maybe the battery's going dead. Oh, that's what it is. Look at me. Not being all smart. Realizing that my equipment's going dead. I actually wonder if you could see this if I did it in the light. Yeah, this takes a little while, but the effect is just beautiful when it's done. If it was daytime, I'd literally just take it outside. Okay, so we have that. Cut this off before I kill it. Let's lean it back a little bit. We'll put 
Put some more resin in the bottom. Oh, this little spot right here. I wanted to put some resin there too. There we go. Let's actually uh, cut off the light and see how that looks on camera. Not bad. Pretty cool. I can look at this for a minute. <laughs> Every once in a while we'll take our little stick and test it, see if it's still tacky. Oh, that's hard. What about this? Yep. Yep, we're good. Okay. Yeah. Alright, cut our lights off. Now that we know that part of the problem we were having earlier was our light, let's uh, try to do what we were trying to do earlier. Because some icicles would look great on this. Let's see, we're going to put one here. Which one is it? Yeah. <coughs> Gets a little bead. Touch it. And then slowly pull it down. And then cut your line on. Put another one over here just because I don't know, I want one here. I think it'll look cool. Okay. I really do need to get another pair of scissors. We're just going to snip it if I can reach it. Mm. Uh, let's make this one over here a little bigger. Can't really see it on camera. If you ever look, and look at a frozen waterfall, a lot of times you'll notice that where it's frozen is definitely not where you would think it would be. Okay, I like that. Mm. Let's see. Alright, next up. We have a little raw rock showing over here. And a few other things. And what we're going to use is Green Stuff World Liquid Frost. Now, this is an interesting product. And the reason I say it's interesting is because the best way I have found to use it is not pre the directions. Uh, the best way I have found to use this product is to simply just drop it straight out of the bottle. Yeah, I know. Sacrilege. Okay. We're going to put a little puddle of it up here. That looks good. Maybe we'll put us a little happy puddle here, and then a little bit along the edge here, because why not? 
Okay. So this is starting to look like a thing now. And when this frost dries up, we'll see if I've got an example close by I can show you. Ah, yes. Cut our light on. This is what it will look like. All those little tiny white crystals. This effect is also done with the frost. And then, obviously, the little resin ice crystals down the sides. That's a little bit of plastic with some resin on it. Okay. Back to basing. We're going to check this again real quick with the UV. Make sure everything's cured up. Alright, I'm going to take a short moment and pick out some flocking. Okay, I've had a look around at some of the flocking and what I've decided is, is we're going to add some color uh, and we're going to go crazy because why not? This is some very rainbow-esque looking flocking. Uh, it's very pretty. And this is just the peel and stick type. Um, we're going to find us a couple pieces that we think will look good on our base. Uh, a lot of times when you see things like this on a cliff side, it's normally closer to the edges because that's the only place the snow will allow it to grow. So, let's uh, shove us a little piece back here. All this is still wet, mind you. And we won't have to glue this down. As you can see, it's, it's still wet. Uh, we have not given anything time to dry. Okay, so a little color there. Let's get us a little tiny piece and put it up front here. Right, right there. After this dries, we will bush this back out. It will also be coated in the liquid frost, which has a really interesting effect when it's put on flocking. Um, because the flocking holds the frost so well, it builds up and really, really spikes out. Um, you know, my mama said, put something right here. So we're going to do that. Right there. Now maybe maybe we put a little piece right here, just just a little tiny piece. If we can't find a tiny piece, we'll just cut one. I'm I'm famous for <laughs> cutting these little pieces of flocking. Um, I find a lot of times they're too big. Okay, I feel like we need one right there. So. Let's see here. We'll take e. we'll take this one just because it's easy to get to. Well, hold my tongue. How about that one? Booyah. Alright, we're gonna stick that on the end of our tweezers. And then use our X-Acto knife. Now this is a lot like cutting hair. Uh, you don't want to cut it from the top. You don't want to just put your knife straight down on it and cut it. You want to come at it from the bottom and then just kind of wiggle your knife through. What this does is it allows you to cut the attachment at the bottom without cutting all the little micro fine hairs. You'll feel a little click and that'll mean it's cut. Move this over. Oh, there we go. Alright. 
put that on our tweezers. We're going to put it right here. Well, if I can grab a hold of it. <laughs> Everything is so wet, nothing wants to stick. Okay. Alrighty. Let's cut this slide off so you can get a little bit better view. Mm, maybe we need the light. And that is our base. Hope you like it. Have a wonderful day.